Cool. Looks like everyone can hear me okay. That's brilliant. So welcome to this workshop, which is going to show you how you can put together your own persuasive adverts that grab people's attention and screams, buy me. Whether you've dabbled in ads before or if it's all a bit alien to you and you've never touched an ad before, this is for you. It's for any business that wants more business from their ads. Now, the secrets behind creating powerful ads, it, it's not something that's really taught to us as business owners. And in fact, it's, it's quite difficult to learn unless you buy loads and loads of books on advertising and persuasion and influence and copywriting and psychology and design, the list goes on. So my goal today is to condense everything that I've learned over the years about designing persuasive ads into a, a, a method that's incredibly easy to follow using a template that anyone can use. And that way, whenever you design your own ads, you can follow my method for the best possible chance of success. So why do you need to learn how to produce persuasive adverts? Well, it's because there are so many other businesses out there competing for the same customers. So you need to have an advert that just grabs your customer's attention. But not only that, you also need to persuade them that you are better than your competitors. And you need to convince them to take action, to pick up the phone or to place an order or to do whatever you want them to do. And this workshop is designed to teach you how to do just that in a way that's really, really easy to follow, I promise. <laughs> So yeah, I'm not gonna bamboozle you with a load of uh, psychobabble or fancy words or confusing phrases, that sort of thing. All I'll be doing, you, uh, doing is showing you a step-by-step -step method that you can follow to make your adverts more powerful. What I won't be doing, however, is showing you how to create a beautiful ad. Beautiful ads, they're, they're great, but they don't pay the bills. What you need, are the skills to create persuasive ads. There's a big, big difference. Just before we dive right into actually creating an advert, I need to show you a few slides first. Okie dokie. Well, let's go back to 1999. So we were selling luxury Formula One packages for big companies like Microsoft and Logitech, Orange, that sort of thing. You know, the blue uh, chip companies. I was the junior marketing assistant at the time, and I really didn't have any experience at all in advertising. But they picked me to run an advert in the Telegraph because I knew how to use a Microsoft publisher. Now, please forgive my blatant sexism at that time, because Formula One was a bit of a masculine sport at the time. And I wanted to come up with something a little bit naughty, a little bit risky, something that people would do a double take and go, what? So I sat there in my PC and I came up with this ad, which cost £500 for a small placement and got it published in the Telegraph Sports Supplement. And I honestly really couldn't believe what happened because it resulted in £25,000 in sales. And that's almost a 5000 return on the investment of 500 quid. No wonder I got a pay rise soon after that. Now, obviously, I wouldn't be able to run this, uh, this ad today for obvious reasons. But from that very moment, I was absolutely hooked on consumer psychology. And from then on, the more I learned about persuasion methodologies, the more successful I became with my ads. I realized that I could get the telephone ringing, the order books flowing, and my bosses smiling at their bank balances. And I must admit, I really enjoyed that job. People that know me, and there's a lot of people on today that, do, uh, that know what I do. I run a digital publishing company. My business, Click2 Media, um, relies on multiple revenue streams to generate profit. Um, and that includes um, things like lead generation, affiliate marketing, display ads, digital products, paid stuff, that sort of thing. Don't worry if you don't know what it means, it doesn't matter. But there's one thing behind it all, and that is understanding enough about psychology and persuasion to get people to do what I want them to do. And when I realized this, and when I learned it, 
honestly, it was like I just discovered the, the, the secrets of the universe. So since my business began, my network of 30 odd websites has shown more than 2 billion ads since my business began. And over that time, I've learned what works and what doesn't work. So as you know, we're absolutely bombarded with adverts each and every day. They are everywhere. Flyers, junk mail, Facebook ads, newspaper ads, you name it. They are all trying desperately to get your attention and persuade you to buy something. So here's what this workshop is for. I'm going to give you a simple method to ensure that every time you need to create an advert, whether it's for social media or for your newspaper, or for your direct mail flyers, they stand the best chance of getting more sales from your customers. No matter what your skills, I'm going to show you how to turn truly awful ads into great ads that capture your reader's attention and compels them to act. Now, if you think that you're not good enough, that you haven't got any design skills, or that it's going to, uh, let me just admit, John there, sorry about that. So if you think that you're not gonna be good enough, that it's gonna be complicated, you're absolutely wrong. This, uh, this is, I promise, going to be really easy. You don't need to remember everything. Everything that you need will be available to you um, afterwards so that you can do the same as what I'm gonna to do today. So at the end of the workshop, I'll give you all the design templates that I use, you know, everything that, that, that I've got. I don't know what I've got, but I'll, I, will, I will get some stuff over to you absolutely free. So you can easily drag and drop your own content into the ad template. And just in case you worry and know, I'm not selling anything here. Um, so let's take a very quick, a quick look at what new skills that you'll be picking up today. There are two principles really that I'll be using. In advertising, they've got, they've got kind of fancy names. They are, first one is the rhetorical triangle and the second one is the ADA principle. You might've come across them sometime, but don't, seriously, don't worry if you haven't. If you're thinking, oh crap, this is confusing already, <laughs> don't think that. All I'm saying is that these principles have got real names, so don't panic. I'm gonna keep all the psycho babble to an absolute minimum and I'll explain everything as I go along so you completely understand what the hell I'm talking about. So as we go through this workshop, we'll be breaking it down into five stages, persona, brand voice, outcome, message, and finally, the good part where you see everything come together, actually putting together the advert, the creation on the canvas. Each of these steps will only take a minute or two, but they're necessary just to provide some context before we dive into the ad itself. Before we launch in, I just wanted to clarify something here because it's, it's quite important. So it's about persuasive advertising itself. All we're doing in this workshop is teaching, uh, it's, sorry, it's learning how to influence a consumer so they buy from you. Even though these are specific persuasion techniques, they are not, uh, repeat, they are not manipulation. Manipulation and persuasion are two very different things. Manipulation is an absolute no-go for me because it uses sneaky tactics that I consider unethical. I just don't, I, I don't get involved in that side of marketing. But however, if you're in business, then you need to use uh, to be persuasive. You need to sell your products and you need to use persuasion to get your ad seen so it stands out like a sore thumb above your competitors. And let me reiterate this, none of the te techniques that I'm showing you today are unethical or manipulative. They are just persuasive. So putting that worry aside, let's move on to step one, the customer persona. We start off here with a persuasive advert canvas, which helps us 
put together a powerful advert. And don't worry too much about it at the moment because we'll be coming back to, the, to, to this um, in a moment. So the first thing that we need to do on this canvas is to really define our customer persona. Some will know it as an avatar, um, but it, it describes your perfect customer. And this is important. A customer persona tells you exactly who you're designing the advert for. Without it, you're doomed to fail, even before you've started. Before you start creating any type of advert, in fact, any type of marketing, it's important to know more about your potential customers, who they are, what their problem is, where they hang out, what their motivations are. But why do we need to know that? Well, it's because you need to know what triggers to use to persuade them to buy from you. If you don't know anything about your customers, you won't have any clue what message to use. So whenever you sit down and think about creating an advert, refer back to it as you should for any marketing activity and ask yourself, what do I need to do to get this person to buy from me? And it's incredibly important that you do this. And luckily, you only have to do it once and you can refer back to it time and time again. Next up, you'll need to know what type and style of message is most suitable for your customer. And we call this the brand voice. Brand voice is just a fancy way of saying, what type of message uh, do we want to convey? In our, in our advert, it absolutely must appeal to the type of personality outlined in your customer persona form. Now, can you see how the customer persona is so incredibly important now? So ask yourself what you want the brand voice to be in your advert. Do you want it to be funny, sad, cool, professional? You can choose more than one, of course, but don't go for more than two because honestly, trust me, it gets a bit complex if you start throwing in three or four. So stick to two of those. When you know what your brand voice is gonna be, it'll save you loads of time. So you're not sat there with a blank canvas playing around with a thousand and one different ideas. Trust me, I've done that so many times. That's when things start to get really messy. So on to the next slide, the message. You'll remember a couple of slides ago that I mentioned the rhetorical triangle. Behind every ad, there's a choice that needs to be made. In order to create a persuasive ad, you need to pick one or more parts of a principle called the rhetorical triangle. Sounds really fancy, but all it is is just a name that's used to work out which of the following appeals will be used in your ad. So there's three of them. First up, there's ethos. And this means using credibility, trust, and endorsements by someone else that is well known. In other words, anything that you can use that will build trust in your business. Trust is important. Without it, the only people that will buy will be those wanting to take a bit of a risk, a bit of a punt, a gamble. So, an example of ethos is for the ads that say, and you see them all the time on telly, nine in 10 dentists choose Colgate toothpaste, which suggests that dentists are credible experts in their field, which obviously they are. And next is pathos, which means using certain hooks to provoke an emotional reaction. This can be anything from using humor or fear or happiness or guilt or sadness or love. Great example of pathos in action are ads um, from charities that, that, that use sadness and pity to pull at those heartstrings. You know, you know, those ones that try and make you cry. And finally, there's logos. Now, don't get this mixed up with the word logo, a company's brand logo. This is different. Logos is about using facts and figures to back you up and provide proof 
of whatever you're claiming. And interestingly, when I said before that uh, nine in 10 dentists choose Colgate toothpaste, this also includes Logos because it includes a clear statistic. And you'll see Logos used a lot in car ads and beauty products, technical goods such as proven to clear dandruff or NCAP passenger safety ratings or beautiful 12 megapixel camera. So before you begin working on your advert, you'll, have a, you'll want to have a really good understanding of which of these elements of the, the, the triangle you can use in your ad. And ideally, you want to use a mixture of all three rather than just one alone. And if you get all three, you've got the basics of a very, very persuasive advert. And if you can use elements from each one, you've, you've, you've absolutely hit the jackpot. Even getting one or two uh, a squeeze into your advert will make it incredibly powerful. The last step before we get stuck into the actual design is the outcome. What we're trying to do here is to discover what the reader will get out of it when they buy your product. This will help us to come up with suitable wording for the advert. So we need to ask, what will the buyer believe or become after they use our product? And this is your promise to the customer. You could, you could you know, have a come up with any promise. You could make them more successful, wealthy or famous, more intelligent, better looking or more fashionable or, or more comfortable or pain free, less stressed, more unique, healthier. All these different things. It, it's what the, uh, the reader will end up fee feeling or being after they buy your product. And knowing what the outcome will be for your customer is incredibly powerful because it enables you to really paint a picture of what life will be like once their problem is solved. And you can paint that picture in the reader's mind in your advert. I tell you what, it's, it's all really clever stuff, isn't it? So writing this down before you sit down and put together your advert will give it an, an added punch. So before we do actually get stuck in, let's just talk about the business that we're going to be advertising here. Last week, I asked the Rainmaker members if they'd be interested in having an advert created for their business as part of this workshop. And now, obviously, I've got loads of people put their hands up, but I chose Dave Wedge from Move Me Telford. Dave runs a house and office removals company, just a stone's throw away from where I live in Stafford. He's been in the removals business for more than two decades. And I tell you what, he really knows his stuff. Great reputation locally, great bloke as well. And he's on here. <laughs> so why did I choose Move Me Telford? Well, don't worry, it's nothing to do with favoritism here because I do like Dave. Um, it's actually because I've done a lot. I've, I've got a lot of experience in the home buying industry, not because I've moved house a lot, which I have done anyway, but because I've run a company that provides home buyer reports. So I've already done my research there. It was nice and easy to come up with a customer persona. Anyway, by choosing Dave, I was able to reduce the research to a, an, an absolute minimum for this workshop. And I was able to put together that customer persona much quicker than a persona for, let's say, a business doing dog grooming or a hairdresser or a fitness trainer. So anyone that has moved house will know that the removals business is extremely competitive. There's so many companies out there all competing for the same people. But the good thing here is that most removals companies all save the same thing in the same way using similar images. And I'll tell you what, they use really busy ads as well. Almost all of them try to fit in everything about their business, which, which is fine. You know, it, 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 if it's working for them, it's working for them. But we've still got our work cut out. Our goal here is to create a powerful advert that's going to result in Dave's company being chosen by whoever is flicking through all of these adverts. And to do this, we need to put together 
everything that we know about our target audience before we begin. It sounds a bit complex, doesn't it? But luckily I've put together something that brings together into one page that you can use over and over again. And that is the persuasive advert canvas. And with this one page canvas, you can put together all the information that you have about your customers uh, from their needs, their wants, their motivations to the message you need to convey, your promise, your emotional hooks, and a lot more. But this, the, the persuasive advert canvas um, is great because it also contains a checklist of, uh, so when you finish your advert design, um, it, it, it just ticks off loads of different things to make sure that you've got everything in place. But it is a really powerful template that helps pinpoint the exact type of message your advert needs to convey to make it extremely powerful. It's really, really easy to fill into, which makes it a great starting point for your advert. Without it, you'd be struggling for ideas. So as you can see, I've filled in my persuasive advert canvas in advance to save a bit of time here. It would normally only take you about half an hour anyway, but um, by doing so, I've just sped things up a bit by doing it in advance. We filled in the customer persona to find out more about the typical person who this advert's aimed at. And you'll notice that I'm quite specific about the details. The reason that this is, is that the more real you can make this fictional person, the better. You want to ask yourself here, am I saying things in this advert that this person would respond positive, uh, positively to? For the brand voice, we now know that we can go for a relaxed, friendly, but professional advert. That's great, actually, because we can break conventions to make our advert really stand out from the crowd here. And we also know that we've got elements from all three rhetorical triangle sides. Trust, obviously, is essential. Emotion runs high when moving home. And we can use facts to back up what we're actually saying in the advert. And emotional hooks are very, very, very powerful here. The fear of something going wrong is incredibly, I think, I'm pretty sure it's uh, top um, on the list of emotions for someone moving house. And the outcome, i.e. our promise, is that the customer will feel a huge sense of relief once it's all over as you do feel when you've moved house, you know, all that relief that you feel. And this is what we want to try and uh, tap into here. And the last two boxes, the targeting channels and post-production checklist, there are additional things to help you once you've designed the advert. The checklist is really helpful because, as I said before, it'll remind you of anything that you've missed and reassure you that you've got everything covered. Right then, now we've done all the hard work, it's time to put it all together. So now we've got everything that we need on the persuasive advert canvas to put together a really powerful persuasive advert that screams, buy me. We're gonna be using a popular online tool called Canva to create our advert. You've probably heard it a bit before, it's quite popular. With thousands of easy to use and professionally made templates, Canva helps you create, customize, and share your designs all in a few clicks. The presentations we design with Canva always impress our clients. Plus, anyone on our team can make them. Start designing for free at canva.com. You might get a lot of professional designers looking down their nose at you for using it, but who cares when your phone is ringing off the hook with orders? Okay, right. So here, is our template. This is our starting point. And you'll notice, first of all, that it's not your usual advert. Um, it contains a canvas containing an odd shape frame ready for an advert, or re rather ready for an image, a strong, powerful headline, a bit of text to explain what goes where, and little else, really. This layout itself it's, uh, it's called the Ogilvy Thirds layout, and it was named after the father of advertising, David Ogilvy himself. So you'll notice that the canvas is split into approximately two thirds for the text and one third for the image. And it, to be honest, it works just as well the other way around too. 
But the Ogilvy Thirds layout is really clever because Ogilvy knew that this layout suggests that the headline on the left is actually a caption for the image. Because captions are read by twice as many people as just normal text, it's a great way of drawing attention to the most powerful place, the headline. And as for the text itself, you'll notice that the fonts I've used are just they're just incredibly simple. And one word about fonts, forget fancy fonts in your adverts. You need a font that is so easy to read that your readers will glide through your words like butter. Your headline is probably the most important element. So use a clean, modern, thick font that catches your eye. Now, there is an old argument for using serif fonts rather than sans serif fonts. Personally, I've never had any problem with sans serif fonts. And a sans serif uh, fonts are the ones without the little bits on the, um, uh, on the, on the edges, um, like uh, Times New Roman. But I'd, I've never had any problem with sans serif fonts because they, they look clean and modern. So I generally tend to stick with those. And you're probably wondering why I haven't made use of all the white space. I've tried to try, I've tried to really keep things clean here. When it comes to drawing attention to something, white space really is your best friend. So many businesses, when they're faced with a blank canvas, and you, you just look at the uh, those removals ads from before, they try to squeeze in something in every single bit of empty space. But strangely enough, it actually has the opposite effect. And those removals companies, the adverts that I showed you before, they try to fill in every bit of white space and it becomes cluttered. And it actually reduces the chance that it will grab your reader's attention. So use white space and be generous with it. So anyway, this is the baseline template for your advert. I guarantee that wherever you place this advert, once it's finished, it'll stand out like a sore thumb. And you'll notice here that uh, underneath, if I just scroll down a bit, I've written attention, interest, desire, action, also known as ADA. Now, the ADA principle, really important, because it's the secret behind almost every successful advert. It's a methodology that, that's used by most advert designers because it follows a set of principles to ensure that your ad ends up being powerful and persuasive. Forget creating beautiful ads. You, you want persuasive ads. So in short, it means that your number one job is to grab people's attention and then build interest. Next, you stimulate desire. And finally, you push your reader to take action. And the ADA principle is there so you can follow it through as we create in our advert. And once our advert is ready, you can remove that and then download it, but um, you'll figure that one out anyway. So first up is um, first up in the ADA principle is attention. Now advertising is a big, 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 big business. Three hundred and twenty-five billion dollars was spent on it in two thousand and nineteen. Um, there weren't there aren't any figures for last year yet, unfortunately. But that means you're having to compete for eyeballs, and it means you're uh, you need to make your ad stand out from the crowd. You can do that by drawing attention to your ad visually and by creating a strong emotional feeling, creating an element of surprise or showing something that is unusual or not expected. So what you're trying to do here is to break the patterns that your audience are normally exposed to. So have a look at the advertising channel you're using, for example, newspaper ads, and break convention, do something different. In this ad for Move Me Telford, we're going to look for an image that's going to catch their reader's attention. Now, this image that we're going to be using could be anything, but we need to make it appropriate for the audience, your message, your promise, and your brand voice. 
In other words, be appropriate. I want to find a, um, a picture related to moving house, but one that's different to what everyone else is using. I know that the ideal customer in my persona is friendly and relaxed. So I might want to actually find something that's a little bit quirky. Our brand voice and emotional hooks in the persuasive advert canvas tells us that we can be quite relaxed with this, perhaps even a little bit amusing. So, right, okay, let's crack on with it. Let's search for a picture in Canva that's going to be, uh, going to cause heads to turn. So we click on, um, Oh, I've just deleted it. Okay, so so let's click and find a picture. We shall type in moving house funny. Press enter. Okay, so I, I like this actually. I like this picture of, of, of this dog. So let's just drag it over and drag it into um, that picture. We're just going to make it a little bit bigger in the frame as well just so it really, really stands out. Okay, right, uh, where was I? Okay, so yeah, that'll do. So interestingly, babies, faces, naked bodies and animals all feature way, way, way right up high on the list of pictures that grab the most attention. And remember, the idea is to catch someone's attention. You can use an image that arouses pleasant or unpleasant emotions or create confusion or surprise or be provocative or make your reader smile. You might not even like this image that we're using. That's fine. Remember, this advert isn't designed to appeal to you. Cool. So we'll go with this dog. And luckily as well, the dog's eyes are looking left towards the text. Research shows that eyes looking at text draw the reader into the word. So that's great. So next up on the ADA principle is interest. The goal of the interest part of ADA is to generate, obviously, interest in the benefits of your product and to get them to carry on reading. We do this by crafting a powerful heading subheading and intro body copy. Fail here and you won't convince them that your product will meet their needs. And this is where your promise comes in. Whether your reader specifically needs something or wants something, this part of, a, of the ADA principle answers the Will it make me more money, more intelligent, better looking, less stress, etc? What the product, oh, sorry, what the promise does is to tap into the benefits that your product will bring. We want to solve their problem and create a visual image in the, in the, in the reader's mind of what things will be like after they've used your product. And do you remember the persuasive advert canvas uh, going back from earlier? And, and as we're going through this, we need to keep referring to this because this is telling us how we're putting it all together. But we know from the message and again from the emotional hooks that fear, panic and worry are high up on the list of emotions for people moving house. So we can create something that really taps into those emotions here. Let's go ahead and put in some text. So what we're gonna put is, um, let's highlight this, move house, stress-free. And it is as easy as that. And let's just, There you go. So as David Ogilvy once said, unless your headline sells your product, you've wasted 90% of your money. So place your biggest benefit in your, head, in your headline. But the one thing that's the most important thing to your reader in the headline. 
keep it short too. The longer your headline, the fewer people that will read it. So let's put in a, uh, a subheading and a paragraph, uh, the first paragraph, based on what we know about building interest. Now, I've, I drafted something earlier, so I'm just going to drop it in. See what you think. So move house, stress-free, even your dog will want in. And then for the paragraph, we will put in, okay, let's put this in. Okay, so we've got, oh my gosh, it's moving day. Got to pick up the keys. Mobile's ringing again. It's the solicitor. Has the money been transferred? Where are the kids? Must remember to say cheerio to the neighbor. What on earth is the dog doing? See how I'm sneakily playing the part of the reader here and how they feel when they're actually on moving day. There's so much going on at once when you move house. So I want to trigger those emotions. I want to induce that panic, that fear, that worry. And you can pretty much do this for any business, whether you've got a plumbing business or a car dealership. All you have to do is tap into the emotions and replicate that feeling of being in heightened tension. A plumber, for example, burst pipes or broken down boiler, car dealerships. The roads are unsafe for your young children in the back seat. That, that sort of thing, you get the idea. But it, it doesn't always have to be a negative emotion. You can do the same with positive emotions too. But what this trick does is that it uses um, heightened tension to put that primary feeling or emotion into the reader's mind and to get them to imagine themselves right at that moment when the emotion is at its highest. It tells a story packed with emotion. And to be honest, you feel compelled to read it, don't you? Now, if it feels uncomfortable writing in a way that triggers so many powerful emotions, then we'll just do it anyway. You're not there to be mediocre. You're there to be persuasive. Your competitors don't create ads like these because they're either A, too scared what people might think if they, if they put this sort of thing, or B, they've got no idea how to write this way. Well, you do now. If you want people to pick up the phone, to email you or to buy your products, get used to using emotion in your adverts. Right. On to the third stage of the Ada principle, which is desire. By now, you've convinced your reader that the product is a good fit for the reader and it will benefit them in some way. Great. Let's take a look at the message again. That is the message that we outlined before and see what we, we can do here. This is where you can bring in elements of the rhetorical triangle into play. This bit yeah, it can be a bit tricky and you might want to spend some time having to think of what you want to say and how. So the idea is to fine tune your ethos, pathos and logos, your credibility, your emotion, and proof to deliver a short but powerful bit of copy that increases the customer's level of desire here. So let's go ahead and draft something for the second paragraph. Okay, right. At least my oop, valuables are in safe hands. Okay, that's the part when I offer the solution, which is your promise. The promise is that all will be okay. You'll be safe. Uh, sorry, your, your valuables will be safe. And then that at least Dave and his team at Move Me Telford are looking after your valuables and, they, and getting them to the new house safely. And this is where the 
ethos, pathos and logos comes in, you've already stirred those emotions. So now you want to, uh, you, to gain people's trust and provide facts after this. So let's do that with the following sentence. So I'm going to cut and paste here just to uh, speed things up a bit. There we go. Move happy with the number one rated home removals company in Telford. Not only have I included a positive emotion with move happy, but I've also provided a fact that move me Telford is rated number one, which I do believe is indeed a fact. And congratulations, Dave, on that. But what about trust? Well, we can boost that by adding credibility logos such as industry associations, trust marks, client logos, that sort of thing. This is a great way of, of creating trust. And there was a recent study by Phoenix Online that showed that 48% of readers rely on these as a sign of credibility. So they're powerful. Let's drop them in. I've uploaded some before um, to my folder. So we'll go to uploads and we're going to drop those logos in. OK. So now we've built up trust. So last on the aid of principle is action. Now we've got a great draft for our advert. We want to make sure the reader knows exactly what they need to do next. We call this the call to action. And this can be as simple as a phrase that says call today or buy now or a website address to, to visit. And lots of research over the years has proven just how important a strong call to action is. The clearer and more visible it is, the stronger the call to action is, and the more compelled the reader will be to act. The absolute best calls to action are prominent, short in length, have a sense of urgency, and have a clear benefit. So try not to use phrases such as buy today and call us. We've tuned out from most calls to action like these, and they're, to be honest, they're a bit pant. Use your imagination to create a call to value. So for our advert, we're going to throw in a little something to create a bit of urgency here and provide that value. So instead of telling people just to call or visit a website, we're going to, be, we're going to pull those people towards us that might be sitting on the fence with a special time-limited offer, an offer that has an expiry date. So there you go. Quote, move happy before 1st of April and get 10% off. Now, sod it. Let's make 10% off bold as well. Yeah, go on. Now, notice how I repeated a positive emotion there again, i.e. move happy and then provided a discount as an incentive. And I've also used urgency by stating that the offer ends before 1st of April. And remember, advertising is little more than persuasion. And it's a fantastic way to discourage for people from taking no action is by giving a deadline. And finally, we will just enter the company strap line in the space at the bottom. So keeping the community moving. So we're pretty much done. What you can do here is feel free to tweak and jiggle things around a little bit until everything looks great. And you don't have to use this exact template, of course. You can use your own or you can replace the image frames. You can uh, just have a little bit of fun, to be honest. It really is up to you. But what I've done is this. Number one, we've used an image to capture attention. Number two, 
we've highlighted the primary benefits in the headline. Number three, we've used emotion to highlight the pain points. Number four, we've created desire. And number five, we've provided reasons why the reader should take action. And I'm not saying that this advert couldn't be improved, but put this advert alongside other ads in your sector and I guarantee that it'll get more inquiries than your competitors. Remember, this isn't about creating beautiful adverts. I'm not interested in creating stuff that's considered gorgeous. I mean, I'm not gorgeous myself. <laughs> My job is to create things that get results, that gets the tills ringing and the bank manager smiling. And the same with you. You might not like this design, but really you shouldn't care what you think of the result. It's how successful it is that you should be thinking about. So if you want a beautiful advert, then go to the expensive design agency and get half the results. If, but if you want sales, then create a persuasive advert. Remember, you want buyers, not design awards. So let's head back to the slides to wrap things up. So before I finish up, I've got some final tips that can really help boost the persuasiveness of your advert. So ask questions in your copy to hook people in and get them really thinking. Use testimonials from existing customers. If you've got space, remember, don't try and squeeze too much into the advert. Use alliteration and rhymes to give your, and puns, puns are always good, um, to give your copy a little more punch. Bright colours, odd shapes and attention grabbing images really helps your ad stand out. And power words. Oh, there's, do a Google search for power words. There's, there's thousands of them, but they're amazing. Such as free, exclusive, offer, new, guarantee, secret. And the best one of all, the word you. All of those power words are going to give your copy an extra element of persuasion. So please do not hesitate to use them, but be careful not to overdo it. And re finally, remember, really important this, to split test different variations of your ad adverts, especially on digital, such as social media, where you can run lots of different ads um, at the same time you'll be surprised how much difference a single change to the headline can make or the choice of an image or the call, uh, the call to action. If you can, split test three or four very slightly different variations of that same advert. So that pretty much brings an end to this workshop. And by now, you'll have learned enough about the process of putting together a persuasive ad to be able to do it yourself. We've learned about how important the customer persona is, the brand voice, the outcome, the message, and finally, we put it all together. Final words, and they're very important, um, about the adverts that you're gonna be creating in the future now that you're armed with this knowledge. So you got your advert, brilliant, but, where you advertise your persuasive advert is as important as the advert itself. It's incredibly important that you place your advert in somewhere that reaches the right people. That is the person or group of people represented in your customer persona. If you don't reach their eyeballs, it doesn't matter how persuasive your advert is, your advert will fail. So in other words, even if you've created an amazing advert for your lipstick, there's no point in showing it to a 60-something man with a taste in leather bush hats. You're just not going to win that one. Now, there's so many more persuasion techniques out there. Honestly, you wouldn't believe it. 
It's a real shame that I couldn't possibly cover uh, more techniques in such a short amount of time. But if you're interested in digging deeper, I really do recommend starting off with these few books that go much, much deeper. The three that I recommend are influenced by Robert Cialdini. The, oh, he's the top guy in persuasion. Yes, by Noah Goldstein and Cash Cashvertising by Drew Eric Whitman. Well, that's the workshop almost wrapped up, folks. If you're not a member of the Rainmakers Club, I think almost everyone is here, actually, and you have already uh, and you have benefited from this workshop today, then do your business a favor and join the club. This workshop is just a tiny bit of what's in store in the Rainmakers Club, I promise. We've put together a platform to help your business double, triple, or even quadruple your sales using techniques well, pretty much like the one that I've shown you today. And we've also got free books and downloads and cheats, cheat sheets and I can't really say that probably, swipe files, tutorials, events, directories, tools and templates galore. Seriously, there's a lot on there. So if you're ready to grow your business, please do head over to the join uh, to join the Rainmakers Club. It's absolutely free. All you need to do is to head to the Rainmakers, uh, the, the rainmakers.club and join in 30 seconds flat. So that's how to create persuasive, powerful adverts that grab your customer's attention. If, no, when you put this knowledge into action, let us know how you get on and perhaps share your successes with the other Rainmaker members. Good luck and see you on the next tutorial.